Hello and welcome to another installment of Mission So Possible. Let's just jump right on in. Several years ago, about five years ago, I came up with this wonderful idea. And looking back on it, I was definitely not the first person to come up with this idea, but I was really proud of it. The idea was, what if you took traditional historical European silhouettes and use African fabric? Ah! So it was the concept was, what if colonialism didn't suck? What if it was more of like meeting of cultures, melding together instead of, you know, what it turned out to be? So my first project uh, was uh, an 18th century gown, a robe anglaise? Sure. Still don't know how to pronounce that. And um, I had to look. I didn't know that I did that and my African fabric steampunk the same year. So I had a lot to do for Dragon Con that year, which probably explains why I ran out of time. I didn't quite finish it. Um, I'm less than thrilled with the, um, the 18th century dress. I wish I would have done bolder colors, bolder African colors. Um, the steampunk one I like. I've worn that several times. Although, um, I don't think I have buttons or closures on it. I think every time I wear it, I have to sew myself in. I've got to, I've got to finish that. Anywho, I love the idea. Um, my goal was to try to work my way through the ages, you know, Tudor, Renaissance, all the way up. Ooh, belch. So the tail end of 2020, I saw the preview for Jingle Jangle and I was like, oh my gosh, I really need to do my straight up Victorian African um, dress because I did steampunk because that's just kind of hints of Victorian. I, I wanted to do like straight up Victorian wear. And then here comes Bridgerton, which was, you know, very diverse and uh, the costume designer was just like, I'm gonna do me, so do you, boo. She just, you know, she just took liberties with um, the era. And oh, it was just, sometimes, I love historical costuming Facebook groups, but sometimes people get a little bit out of hand and they were just like, um, just ragging on the, the show and the costumes. And I'm like, you know what, I don't care. It's okay to take liberties with these costumes, just like the people took liberties on black bodies during that time. Between my love of Jingle Jangle and Bridgerton, I knew what my next mission would be. And it would be Mission African Regency. Thankfully, um, I had done Regency wear before and um, I had all my underpinnings. With no further ado, Let's get to it. All right, let's see what we're working with. Um, first off, the dress pattern I'm gonna be using is the Laughing Moon 126, right here. This, with the short puff sleeves. I used this pattern before when I went to my first Jean Austen Festival, and it was the first Jean Austen Festival for our little town of Mount Dora, Florida. It was charming and wonderful and I had an amazing time. So I don't remember if that pattern is easy because once again, I was rushing. So I, I vaguely remember, I just remember stress, but I don't know if it was stress because of dress, stress, stress, dress, stress, or because, you know, I just, I did it to myself. We all know the answer to that. And as I said before, I'm gonna be using African fabric. Uh, here you go, this nice little print. Um, the store I get my African fabric from is this little shop in New York. It is A-N-K or A-K-N. I don't remember, but I will look it up. I love the little shop. Going in there, uh, I've been going there for years. Anytime I make a my way over to New York, all the way from Florida. Um, it's just this great little shop and it has all these African fabrics and that's where I get my stuff. Okay, so that's gonna be the dress. And I'm also going to try to make a bonnet. 
Err, because why not? Because you're going to run out of time. I'm going to be using the Timely Tresses Ophelia pattern. I will be, the main bulk of it will be this royal dark blue silk taffeta that I got from, where I get you from? Silk Baron. I got it from Silk Baron. I just discovered Silk Baron maybe within the last half a year and man, I enjoy it. So now my go-to places for getting silk is Renaissance Fabrics and Silk Baron. So now I just have to, you know, start. Um, I already have, like I said before, I, I've done this pattern before. So my pattern is all cut out. No, I don't know. Um, no need to do a mock-up. I always cut out my patterns in this paper. Oh, I don't even remember if I told y'all this in my first video, but it's what I do. I cut it out because I don't want to risk cutting my uh, original. So I'm gonna get this all pinned to the fabric and cut it out, cause that's how you sew. Um, I'm not sure I'm gonna start actually cutting tonight because I am so hungry. Cause this stupid Invisalign, I can't snack. Guess you should have worn your retainer after having braces. No snacks for you. And um, I got a show later on tonight. Absolutely no one cares. I'm just doing my, I'm trying to live my life, okay? I'm always concerned that I don't show enough of my process. So here I am cutting out the fabric like you do. I believe that is the lining part. And this is the skirt portion. Jeez. All right, now we're moving on to marking the pleats of the skirt dressy part. Yeah, my mic's not on for a lot of this. So I had to fix it in post. So if it sounds wonky, uh, I am, uh, I'm pretty sure this is the part that I mucked up on my first dress. Yep. So hopefully I will take a little bit more care in marking this. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to use the wax carbon paper. Okay, okay, okay. We all know how to use carbon paper and make pleats. And long story short, I mucked this part up so badly I had to re- Mark them, so nothing to see here, folks. Ah, flyers. Your mic's still not on. Back in my jammies, we keep it real casual in Mission So Possible. So very casual. Check out my fetching bandages from my flu shot and blood work from my physical. Um, I've been working on the project like I should. Eh, I have... The front part of my bodice, meh, meh. And I'm working on the sleeves right now. I've done one sleeve, this little puff sleeve. Uh, I'm kind of proud of myself with these puff sleeves because, or any sleeves. I haven't set them yet, but we'll see. But I decided to take my time and pay attention to all the tips I've read. Uh, this is the band, you know, Finding the center point of the band, finding the center point of where the band is coming in. You know those, whoa, -oh. this is the top or the bottom. Where's my star? Ah, oh, rant. Find the midpoint of this, put a, put a pin in it. I guess when you do gathers, you work, work in sections, quadrants, and apparently that makes life easier for you. And this time I remember to, when I did my running stitch for my gathers, to do it with the right side up, so that way when you have to do your gathers, your bobbin thread is on the side you need, which is on the wrong side. By the end of this sewing night, I would have set my sleeves, which is the real danger, because I'm not great at it. Yay! Next up, the sleeves. I'm telling you, I was feeling myself. I was so proud. Ah, I almost fell. Sadly, I say that a lot in my day to day. See these sleeves? I do not do sleeves well. I always mess up. There's always like a part I miss and there's like a little uh, gap in here, but 
This is the first time I've ever set sleeves without messing up. I didn't accidentally get this part caught in the back and have to, it's, it's just the first time I've ever put in sleeves without having to rip stuff out and start all over or putting the sleeves in backwards. So super proud of myself. Uh, uh, what else? So super proud of myself. And this is the skirt part. Lots and lots of fabric. I did my gathers. And I'm telling you, there's this thing of when like you take your time, things go good. I, I mean, I had very little problems. Slow your roll. I live somewhere between rage crying and very little problems. So it's more like here. I got my ties. This is an apron front dress. So what's going to happen is this little part, this is the front, and it's going to attach to him, and it comes up, ah, oh, let it drop, it'll come up, and it'll gather, it has a little drawstring, it'll gather in, and then actually you have to pin it to yourself. Kind of wish I would have used a different color of thread, but that's okay, I'm just going to say it's accent. So that gathers up. So all I have to do is put this on here, and then put this on here, and then put the ties, and I'm almost done. Well, that description was clear as mud. <laughs> oh wait, then I gotta make the bonnet. Accessories will be my undoing. Uh. I've already cut out uh, my buckram, my mulling, a mulling, mulling, um, to cover the buckram so it's a smoother finish. And my fashion fabric, I'm doing a navy. <laughs> I'm gonna wind up losing these pieces. Um, navy on top and the under this color. Um, oh, I forgot I gotta also cut out the lining. I'll get to that. No, I won't. I actually meant to buy a, an ivory color silk taffeta but I forgot, and so I was like, well, this is the color it's gonna be, so be it, it's fine, it's fine. Um, by the way, I, um, I had all week to finish this. I, I wanna film a little video tomorrow, and so I'm gonna try to build a bonnet in one day, less than one day. Gonna lose that, that is, that is probably something very important. I've already started to tape the wire to the buckram. And then I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and machine sew the wire. A lot of people do by hand, but even even if I had all the time in the world, I'm not, I'm not, anything that I don't have to do by hand, I'm not gonna do by hand. And the majority of this bonnet is by hand, so no. All right, I'm um, gonna finish putting this down. Hopefully I won't Pop my eye out. Until next time, we'll be at the sewing machine. Hmm. Well, this part here is one of the reasons why I'm kind of hesitant to make hats because I am afraid of the wire. I've got the wire. Every time I see the wire, I think it's a TV show. And, um, and it's, I've always wanted to watch it. And everybody's like, you need to watch The Wire. But I feel like it's super gritty. It just promises to be really gritty. And I'm like, at any moment, someone's gonna get shot in the head. So I haven't watched it. Anywho, I'm gonna set this to a zigzag and a, oh, that's long, not long. Yeah. And then a wide, a wide zigzag. That's what we wanna, super wide. I don't know how wide, oh Jesus. Did you see four? Maybe it's four. Now nah, I don't see wine enough. Cause I, again, terrified wine. <laughs> so freaking scared. Oh, I'm gonna die. Girl, get it together. Okay. Okay. I'll probably check back with you when all the pieces are wired up. I have all my wire attached. This is the uh, headpiece, the brim, and the tip. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to 
take my mulling and I am going to, I'm gonna glue it. I'm gonna glue it on this. And then I'm gonna take this, uh, I think it's called crinoline bias tape. And then bias tape it, and, sorry, around the edges. And um, from there, I will have to stitch it all together. So, gonna do this in a night. All right. My hands are already sticky. Ta-da! Ta-da, hell. It was a bit of a nightmare. I think if I would glue the next time, I would put the binding on first and then the mulling because it just, it was, I don't, there's no words for sticky. Here's the bonnet. It's a little catawampus in some places. Uh, next up is to put the fashion fabric on it and decorate it up. And hopefully that would go smoother than the glue because that glue was something else. And then nothing because I ran out of time. I was going to be filming a little video with my dress and some tea and it's really cool. I like it. I'll actually have it posted on my YouTubes. Um, so yeah, I wanted to show me putting the fashion fabric on and putting the trim on. <laughs> trim. God, I'm like a 14 year old boy. I did this whole thing where I dyed feathers, but they were not great quality feathers, and I tried to dye it with uh, rich dye, and it it didn't... I wish I had the feathers. I don't know what I did with those feathers, but it was sad. Like, one of those videos where you see, like, poor ducks with oil on it. It's just... it wasn't great. I don't know why I didn't buy the feathers of the colors I wanted. I, I do not know. Probably because, like, I'm gonna dye it because I'm gonna reinvent the wheel next time. No, I'm just gonna, whatever feather color I need, that's the color I'm gonna buy. Regardless, the dress is done and here it is. So here it is, I'm very happy with it. Not too keen on the chemise showing in the back. The bonnet, um, first time out the gate, I think I did a pretty good job. Just gonna work on my trimming skills. As far as my hair, I wanted to keep it as close to the natural texture as possible, so no straightening or anything like that. My jewelry is from the In The Long Run design, I love them. And as always, I love to decorate with cowrie shells. Look at that. All in all, I am pretty happy with the whole ensemble. Uh, the bonnet's a little struggle bonnet, but I had never made a bonnet before, so wee. Don't forget to check out my little musical video of me in the dress. It was filmed and edited by Cameron Francis. Go to his page too. He has these great short films that he's been doing during this whole pandemic crisis. Really cool, just like a little one man show. Well, that's the episode and scene.